Hi everyone, how's your week? Welcome back to Pacific Front channel. When I was preparing last week video, I remember about a website who always ranks every nation's military power every year. Although I personally rarely use this website due to apparent reasons, Indonesia National Television and a bunch of YouTube channels love to use this website to compare our military strength with the rest of the world. Yup, you guess it, it's the global firepower. So, in today's video, let's find out what global firepower is all about, how it works, and what it doesn't tell us about military strength. For those who don't know, Global Firepower is a website that collects data, formulates it, and ranks military power from 140 nations. The GFP ranking is based on each nation's potential war-making capability across land, sea, and air, fought by conventional means. So nuclear and cyber warfare are not included in the equation. The result incorporates value related to manpower, equipment, natural resources, finances, and geography represented by more than 50 individual factors. These values then process through their in-house formula to generate the power index score to determine the final GFP ranks. Then, this ranking can be seen in more detail divided into several categories, from manpower, air power, land and naval forces, financials, and more. A score of zero is considered perfect, so the smaller the number, the higher the ranking of that nation. Currently, the US is still at the top of the ranking with a power index score of 0.0453, while Russia and China take the second and third place with power index scores of 0.0501 and 0.0511 respectively. How about Indonesia? This year, Indonesia is placed 15 in overall ranks with a power index score of 0.2251, move up one place from 2021. According to their data, currently, Indonesia is ranked fourth in total population, available manpower, and population fit for military service. With an estimated number of military personnel as much as 1.08 million people, consists of 400,000 active personnel, 400,000 reserve, and 280,000 paramilitary personnel. In the air, Indonesia is ranked 27th with 445 total aircraft. We ranked 40 in the fighter and interceptor category with 41 aircraft, ranked 20 in the dedicated attack category with 23 aircraft, and ranked 9 in the transport category with 66 aircraft. On land, we ranked 47 in the tanks category with 314 tanks, ranked 51st in the armored vehicle category with 1,444 vehicles, and ranked 28 in the self-propelled artillery category with 153 vehicles. And for naval forces, surprisingly, Indonesia is ranked 6 in the total naval assets with 296 vessels. I bet the number jump up so much because they include smaller boats which are not registered as KRI or the Republic of Indonesia ship. Furthermore, Indonesia is ranked 10 in frigate category, ranked third in corvette and patrol vessel category, ranked 11 in mine warfare category, and lastly, we ranked 17 in the submarine category. This rank and number is quite impressive, isn't it? But don't be fooled. These numbers only tell us the quantities in each category, not the quality, which arguably more important or even the most important aspect in modern warfare. They do not tell us about the specification, capability, and age of each military equipment. As we already learned from last week's video, most of the Indonesian Navy frigates and corvettes, also all main countermeasures they have, are more than 30 years old. Let's take a look at our frigates. Our 7 frigates are definitely less capable than 6 formidable class that Singapore has, or for the 7 provincial and 2 Karel Dorman class of the Netherlands. They are newer and technologically more advanced than ours. Moreover, six frigates are more than enough for Singapore and the Netherlands, but not for us. Inland forces, they said Indonesia is ranked 47 in the tanks category with 314 tanks. But they do not tell us about what kind of tanks they are. Is it main battle tanks, medium tanks, light tanks, amphibious tanks, or fish tanks? Currently, the Indonesian army only operates 103 Leopard 2 main battle tanks, while the rest are aging light tanks and amphibious tanks. If we compare it with Germany, who currently sitting in the 52nd place with 266 tanks but all of them are the Leopard 2, we are definitely being outgunned. The last example I want to discuss is the manpower category. 
because in my opinion, this category is more difficult to compare than the others. Rifles, ships, tanks, and fighter jets are only tools. It's all up to the man and woman who operates it. How fit and proficient are they? Do they get comprehensive training? Do we give them the best equipment? Are they getting paid enough and have incentive and benefits not only for them but also their family? It might look like small things, but it's what matters the most. If the soldier's morale is low and they are unfit for combat, it doesn't matter if we have 400,000 or 1 million personnel, we're definitely gonna lose. Before we continue, if you find this video informative and enjoyable, please like this video so it can spread to more people. Thank you! I'm not telling you to never use this website again, but use it only as reference for your research. Because if we swallow the entirety of this website as is, without additional research and then telling it to a wider audience and they also believe it, the consequences can be dangerous. First, it will make us feel overconfident with what we have. We become megalomaniacs who thinks we are strong without knowing the real quality of our equipment. Then this will lead to developing a sense of false security. We would have thought our current position is enough to deter potential enemies. So we ignore the modernization program, making it less priority, cut off the defense budget for research and new equipment, and before we know it, we end up being outmatched and outgunned by our neighbors. I hope that situation will never happen. In conclusion, a nation's military power cannot be compared let alone rank only by adding the numbers alone. Unlike football leagues or a boxing match, a nation's armed forces have never competed against each other. There are a lot of aspects and variables that can determine the strength of a nation. Things like quality of their personnel and equipment, force multiplier, the defense industry, defense budget, national and foreign policy, and many others. Although the GFP ranking can provide a glimpse of the military quantity of one country, it doesn't tell us about the type and capability of military equipment nor the skill and proficiency of the personnel who operates it. So further research is needed to fully understand the strengths and weaknesses of a nation. There you have it, the Global Firepower Index and why we must not depend on it. What do you think about this website? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy it. Please visit my merch store, the link is in the description below. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.